Well, we gotta talk about you being on The Voice. I saw you performed a halftime show at Madison Square Gardens. Did anything surprise you about being on The Voice? How has Gwen Stefani helped develop you? Why you got a 12 o'clock garage and you only got 15 cars? Cause we all just wanna be big rock stars and live in hilltop houses driving 15 cars. The girls come easy and the drugs come cheap. Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ride Around Show. Today we have Jillian Jordan. When I'm down, I get real down. One of the newest contestants from season 22 of The Voice, who's on Gwen Stefani's team. Uh, today we're going to talk to you a little bit about your passions for music, your experience on The Voice, and your upcoming projects. Let's do Let's it. Let's hop right in. Just because you say stay don't mean that you won't lie. And just because you say you're sorry for the hurt don't mean it's fine. So yeah, we're hopping to Tesla. So I gotta, I asked all our guests, do you like cars? I like cars, yeah. Okay, I'm cool. kind of into cars, just a little bit. Yeah, I like that. You mentioned like, is, is this how the, the full, full autopilot, autopilot or not? Yeah, you okay. know, I like Teslas. You know, I like, I when I get older, I want to get like a Model X. Oh, the Falcon Wing doors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, that's the one I want. But, oh, okay. um, that's and cool. then I want like a G-Wagon. Yes. And like. So both of those are my two favorite SUVs. Well, let's start with the basics. How old are you? I am 17 years old. Okay. Oh. And you're already on like The Voice and all that's that's cool. Yeah, I'm right. 17 and I turned 18 in February. Okay, a couple more months. Um, and you, where are you from? I am from Long Island, New York. Okay. And I know you graduated from Fayetteville High School. Yes, I A lot do. of our viewers are. Yes. All right, well, we gotta talk about you being on The Voice. We gotta, yes. so we gotta start there. What made me turn right away was when you did that. Boom, ba -da -dum, boom, boom, ba -da -dum, boom. When you sounded so good doing that, I was like, okay. She's dope. So, I mean, just how was that experience overall? It was such a good experience. It was literally like, it felt like a dream all the time. Like, it was like a fantasy. It was like, but it was so fun. Like, I like I met the best friends and I learned so much. It was so fun. How was, how was the audition process for that? It was long. Like, I submitted a video on their website in August of 2021. Mm. And then I actually filmed the show in June. Oh, wow. So, so it, like eight months? Yeah, it was a long time. But I submitted a video on their website and then they just kept emailing me for more and more videos and they were like, send, send, send. And I was like, okay. And the next thing I know, they're like, hey, you're on The Voice. And I was like, ah! <laughs> was that like nerve wracking? Well, I had my like final interview in October and they said, you're not gonna hear anything until March. So then I kind of forgot about it, tried to forget about it in that time. And then from like February, I started to like, Mm -hmm. Think about it again, because I was like, oh my god. And then the day after my birthday, so February 17th, I got a call. And they're like, you're on the show. I was like, mm. that's a nice little birthday gift. I know, <laughs> it was a good birthday gift. And then, so I got on the show, and then, but I also didn't even go out to start filming until June 1st, so. Yeah, where do they film? They film in LA. Hollywood like, Studios? Like Burbank Studio City. Okay, okay. When you pull up to the studio, you literally see like the Jurassic Park yeah. ride right there. Oh, that's cool. Did anything surprise you about being on The Voice? Um, it surprised me like how like how nice everyone was, cause like you'd think people are like stuck up, or, like they're, they're better, but like I didn't meet anyone like that. Like everyone that I met, like crew or like contestants, everyone was so nice. So it was like it was a really good surprise. You had two chairs turned for you. I did. John Legend and Gwen Stefani. What made you pick Gwen? So who are you gonna pick as your coach? I dreamed of this moment, so I pick Gwen. I was standing on stage and like, they were both very persuasive. And I was just kind of like thinking there and there's so much pressure on you in the moment. So you like, and you're still like flustered from what just happened. So you're not like thinking straight. And I was just, I just like closed my eyes and I was like, Gwen. And like that means like it was meant to be, but also she's like such a powerful woman and like women in power and she's like icon, so. Yeah, it definitely was it nerve wracking just to be up there on TV? Yes, oh my gosh. When I like walked on the stage, it's like, it's like you're standing there and you're just like, oh my God, like when I open my mouth, this is it. Like, because yeah. you're there for three weeks before your actual audition. Oh really? So you do like so much prep, so much rehearsal, like, there's so many things that you do. It comes down to that moment. It's like yeah. everything we've worked on comes down to this moment. And it's no do-overs. It's this or nothing. 
And it's like, you're just standing there and you're like, okay. You did it. You got I two did. chairs to turn. Yeah, yeah. which I still don't even believe it. And it happened so quick. Oh yeah, they, I think they turned within like 10 seconds of you singing. Yeah, like on the, thir the third line of my song. That's cool. So it was like. Is there like a, how big is a live studio audience? It's actually not big at all. The actual okay. stage looks is it looks huge on TV. Before COVID, it was probably like 500 people in the studio mm -hmm. audience, but now it was like 150. Okay. So 150 still a 150 lot, especially like, when there's celebrities in front of you. Yeah, one. Yeah, I mean it definitely helps with the energy because if there was no audience, then it's like quiet and then like no oh, one's yeah. clapping or anything. You're just like, oh my god, what's happening? So yeah, once you pick Gwen, once you pick your judge, I mean you're a coach. Mm -hmm. What is the process after that? So for me. You pick your coach and then you went home for a week and then you come back and you start prepping for the second round which is battles and then you battle someone on your team. You don't deserve the one thing that you love. I actually battled with my best friend on my team. His name was Rowan. Mm -hmm. And then you got your song, and then you rehearse with like vocal coaches and like everyone. And then you meet with Gwen, and then she like gives you your advice. And then you we had two more weeks till the performance, and then you have your battle performance. So yeah. Did, did all that go quick? Yeah, it goes quick, but it also doesn't. Like the days were slow. Mm -hmm. But the time was fast, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. the weeks went fast, but the actual days were slow. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Because, like, it's a lot of pressure in the moment, so they go slow, but... Yeah, also, like, I'm on California time, mm -hmm. and, like, my whole family was on New York time. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. I was just in L.A., and, like, the days feel shorter. I don't know, unless you wake up early, because it gets dark at, like, 4.45 there. Yeah, well, I, like, since the time difference, like, works in my favor, like, I, I'll sleep till, like, 12 at home. But I wake up at nine there because it's okay. like, it's so I can start the day and like be productive. Do you work with any of, are you around or work with any other coaches or contestants? Contestants, yes, because we all live in the same hotel and on the same floors. So it was like, like for the first round, I think there was five floors of the hotel that was meant for just us. Um, and like password protected, so you have to like find a password. And then the second round, there's less people, so you're still on the same floor and stuff. So you're definitely around all the contestants like all the time. The other coaches, you're around them like, it's kind of hard to explain, but like when you're in the studio for rehearsal, there's like waiting rooms and like you'll see them like pass you, but you don't really like hang out with them unless they're your coach. Okay, I didn't know if like they were like any like group stuff or whatever. Well, in like the earlier rounds, no, but like my friends that made it to lives, like you get to know the other coaches more. So, like, my friend who was on Team Gwen, she was, like, hanging out with Camila because, like, oh, they were just, like, around. But in the beginning, there's too many people for them to... Hang out with everybody. Yeah. yeah. I, could, I could see that. Right. Would you... I don't want to ask a controversial question. Never mind. I was going to say, would you have picked Camila if she would have turned? Yes. I won't put that in the video. Though. It's okay. If she was my first choice, it's, you don't have to... It's okay. it's okay. She was my first choice. Like, I've said that on interviews before. Oh, okay. Um, so, what type of music do you want to make? What type of artist do you want to be or what type of music do you want to make? going forward um well like on the show the thing that kind of like got me like all the headlines was like when john asked me like oh what kind of artist you want to be and i was like i want to be an influential artist what kind of artist do you want to be i want to be an influential artist i want to be yes. the artist that people feel like they can connect to i want to oh my god I wanna... you thought about it huh? <laughs> honestly I love that you said that. I'm so impressed by you. That's so <laughs> Thank cool. You. Oh my god. You got Julia Michaels' energy. Yeah. Everyone's like blown away. I got like so many mainstream news art articles off of that. But it's so true. Like it's like that's what I want to make. I want to make music that people are like. It's different. It's like... different, but also like where they listen to it and they're like, why is that exactly how I feel? Because okay. like I am a teenage girl, so like or, or like a teenager in general. Mm -hmm. So teenagers, I want them to listen to be like that's how I feel. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do a, your first music section. We'll do a song you made um, called Fake Friends. Yeah, that's pretty relatable because guy, girl, old, young, everybody everyone, hates fake friends. Everyone right? can relate to fake friends. Cause I don't need, I don't need no fake friends. Don't be my friend one day, not the next. Don't expect me to always be there. You don't care about me in any way. Hey, I don't need no fake friends. Okay. Got the hook, yeah. 
Huh? Okay. See? You had that. One day you're here, one day you're not. Uh, 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 uh. Had to pretend I'm better in the end. Eh, 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 eh. I don't need you. I can see you performing this though. Nice message. It's a nice little vibe. This is kind of like my old style of music yeah. where I was going. Um, Cause now music's more raw and real and like yeah. less like. I mean, it definitely like, sounded really pop. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely switching my style, but the song will always have a place in my heart just cause it's like my yeah. first song. Yeah. And it always will have like a relatable message. Like everyone yeah. can relate to that message. Like yeah. everyone has dealt with fake friends in their life, yeah. so. What's another artist you like? Justin Bieber. For real? For real. He, he's like, he's literally the reason I, was a, I became a singer. Like what? A, what about him? Just like just coming up, up young. Yeah, like just like when I was younger, like I would just look at him and I was like, oh my god, that's what I want to be when I'm older. You were a, a believe. A believer. I got that Bieber fever. Let's see. I want to see if I, I want to sing one of his songs if I know any of them. Let me see. If you know, I do the same thing. I told you that I never would. Told you I changed. Even when I knew I never could. Know that I can't find nobody else as good as you. I need you to stay. Need you to stay. Yeah, I do the same thing. I told you that I never would. Told you I changed. Even when I knew I never could. Know that I can't find nobody else as good as you. I need you to stay. Need you to stay. What were your top three choices for the blind auditions? In my song? Yeah. Or do they tell you what song you do? Or do you, you give them a list and then they like they pick, they pick it? Okay, yeah. So what were your top? Because also choices? it's like really hard because they have to buy the rights or if like mm. yeah. So they give you um, a list of approved songs, mm -hmm. and then you could choose twelve from that list, and then you get five from another from any that you want. So issues was my top choice that wasn't on the list, but that was on the list. I had in my blood, like I'm gonna lose you, and Battlefield by Jordan Sparks, and okay. then. But issues has never done been done before on the show, so I was the first person to sing it on the oh, show. Oh, that's cool. So, okay. how has Gwen Stefani helped you develop you? She's so real and she gives such good advice, like genuinely just like, mm. cause she's like a mom. So she mm. just kind of was like, like a mother figure and just mm -hmm. like kind of was like, be yourself and be confident. And she kept telling me like, like no matter what happens, like you're a good singer. Like that's, this is a that'll competition. That'll stick with you for life too. Yeah. That's cool. So cool. she helps me like gain confidence in my singing. Like, hardest part and most fun part about being on The Voice? The hardest part is, um, it's a mental, it's like, it tests you physically, mentally, emotionally, because it's not just like you get up and saying like, you make friends and your friends don't get through and you have long days and rehearsals and filming and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's like a really difficult process. It's so fun, but it's really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and like the best part was like meeting all my friends and like getting to like, just like hang out with people with similar interests. Like you're not gonna get that anywhere else. Yeah, that'll be cool later down the road, especially as all of your careers grow. Yeah. Your collabs and like link with each other, that'll be pretty cool. Um, do you have any other talents like dancing or acting? I am an actress, I was on Law & Order. That's crazy. Yes, I was on Law & Order in 2019. I was a reoccurring character. So I saw you performed a halftime show at Madison Square Gardens. Yes, I did, and that was in 2017. Okay. I think that was, was that like your first big gig? Yeah, that was my first like real professional thing. My agent kind of just brought it to me and she was like, there's an opportunity to like sing at halftime like at Madison Square Garden. Like, How you old know? were you, like 15? No, I was 12. Oh, you've been doing this for a minute. I was 12, yeah. Wow. So I, um, so I did that. I, I got beat out because I, I like a little boy was singing like Aretha Franklin. So. Oh. Emotion. He got he got he, their emotions. Yeah, come on. Yeah. He was like seven. I, 
Lord. I would have had a panic attack at 12 or 7. You've also done, performed two national anthems at, um... Yeah, Barclays Center and City Field for the Mets. Yeah. Yeah, New York, New York Mets and Brooklyn Nets. Yes. Mets and Nets, Lord. Um... Brooklyn Nets basketball. New York Mets baseball. Okay. Do you have any upcoming, we're about, the last song we're about to sing, I know you have a cover of it coming up, but do you have any Yeah, other? so I have that cover coming out, It'll Rain by Bruno Mars, so stay tuned for that, it's coming out very soon. And um, I'm in the middle of writing an EP, which is also coming out soon, and it's going to show my new music style, and you'll see a little bit more of me in it. They didn't get to see, like, on The Voice or anything else. Well, yeah, let's do a... My, we'll do our cover of the cover you're about to release. If you ever believe me, baby, Lisa Murphy never does. Cause it'll take a whole lot of medication to realize what we used to have. We don't have it anymore. I can play you something on release if you want. Ooh, okay, bet. I wish you would've sent me this. I would've liked it. This is, this is, I can tell this is more your vibe nowadays. Yeah. I've been in the hills, superstars, feeling like a pop star. 